is a day that we celebrate the fact that those who cried, Hosanna, here he comes in the name of the Lord, a week later turned around and cried, crucify him. But that was not the end of the story. That was Friday. Today is Sunday. Jesus is risen. To that we can say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Bless the Lord. Darkness is gone. Light floods into our souls. Christ is risen. His love and mercy are poured out for you. Rejoice. You have been saved through the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the call to worship. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Bless the Lord. We'll talk to him in a little while. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Darkness has been vanquished. Come, let us worship and celebrate the good news. You may be seated. Let us quiet our spirits as we join together in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Our hopes and dreams have come true. We do not have to fear death. For Christ grows before us. Praise be to God who has raised Christ from the dead and given to us new life. Open our hearts to receive your wondrous words of love, O God. Help prepare us for the opportunities to serve you by serving others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So before we do our opening hymn today, I just want to, with all of you, welcome our pastor back to his pulpit. When he said that he was going to be on leave for three months, I know we all thought, oh my goodness, that's such a long time. But the time has flown. It doesn't seem as though he's been gone that long. And we want to certainly thank God for those who have filled in while he was away. They did an awesome job and we bless God for them. And we bless God that he has returned. Pastor, I'm going to ask you to pull your mask down, please, so we can see how wonderful you look. And before we continue our service, I'm going to take a moment of indulgence and get my hug now because I know what's going to happen after the service. We are happy that you are back and look forward to an uplifting, spiritually filled message today and moving forward. Christ the Lord is risen today. To that we can say hallelujah. Let us stand and sing our opening hymn. i 
sing Alleluia Once he died our souls to save Alleluia Where's my victory most engraved Alleluia So From John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Pastor, you're actually supposed to be reading the gospel. So we invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. We're putting you to work right away. Let's stand for the reading of the gospel. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around, and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them, 
that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We will now have a service of holy baptism and confirmation. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the tree. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the tree. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the tree. pastor and welcome him back into his pulpit I ask you to stretch your right hand to the pulpit and let us be in prayer father God we thank you that pastor was afforded a time of renewal when you have so much work to do for Jesus it's hard not to become like Mary so busy serving Jesus that you miss Jesus. We pray that pastor was able to reset, to refocus, to refresh, and like Mary, be re-anchored. And, and we pray that he was able to sit at your feet. We pray for divine discernment, protection, from external and internal forces. Protect him by the power of your name. Protect him from the evil one. We pray for his family, that you will continue to watch over them, particularly the children. Help them to make sound choices and for all to know, love, and serve you. 
We pray for courage to declare, thus says the Lord, and to do so with boldness, tempered with compassion. We pray for fresh manna to feed God's people. And Father, we pray that we do our part and encourage him. Help us to follow Paul's words, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Anoint pastor afresh as he has returned to this place to continue your work in this part of your vineyard, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. It is certainly a joy to be back with you in the house of the Lord. And we are going to reflect briefly on this subject. God who shows up in our darkness. We're going to re reflect on the resurrection text. John 20, 1 through 18, on the subject, God who shows up in our darkness. I want to focus on two words that we see often in the Gospel of John. And those two words are the word dark and the word night. In the Gospel of John, the words dark and night do not always refer to the time of day or quality of the light. You've heard me say that before. The Gospel of John is loaded with symbolisms. For instance, in John chapter 13 and verse 30, the evil deed of the betrayal is happening. And we read, so after receiving the piece of bread he immediately went out and it was night who is referred to here Judas Judas is with the other disciples at the Lord's Supper and he just had his morsel but the horrible deed of the crucifixion or rather the betrayal for the crucifixion is happening. And so in John 30, these words, and it was night, tells us, or these words tell us, not just about the time of the day it was, but they tell us about the sheer evil of the deed that was unfolding. Likewise, in John chapter 20 and verse 1, it was still dark when Mary came to the tomb. And we read the words, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. And darkness here, refers not just to the time of the day or the quality of the light that was there, but darkness can refer to the fact that poor Mary was clueless about what was happening and what just happened and more importantly, what God was already doing that very Easter morning. It was still dark. She was still clueless. She still did not know how the pieces of her life, shattered by the horror of the crucifixion, was going to come together again. She was still clueless about how could the society that she lived in, misjudge such a good person as Jesus and inflicted so much evil on him 
to the point of killing him, it was still dark and she was still clueless. Now part of her darkness is that she was still clueless about what God was already doing. So this episode in the Easter story is about a God who shows up at different stages in the darkness of the human situation and transforms our dark night into God's glorious dawn. And so resurrection, the, the event of the resurrection makes some important statements. I want to share a few with you today. First is this. God shows up to help people who are clueless. God shows up to help people who are clueless. You ever hear, heard the old people say, God helps little children and fools? Well, I don't know if you ever heard that. But that proverb says that God intervenes in the lives of people who are clueless about how things will turn out. And we have God intervening in the lives of clueless people all the time. Recently, I actually saw it on a video where a lady just passed. She just passed a wall and just Inches after she passed the wall, the wall came tumbling down. If she was still in the past, she would be a dead woman. So often, God shows up to help us when we are clueless. In her clueless state, while it was still dark, she set out to do the little that she could for the Lord. She was going to anoint his body. She did not know that she would become the first witness and the herald of the resurrection. She left on a dismal mission to do the little last grief work that she could do. But she did not know that the dull, dismal mission attempted for Jesus would become the greatest mission of all time. You haven't heard this for a long time. I'm going somewhere with this. We are often clueless about when we are working for God, how things would turn out. Let me say that another way. We are often clueless about how things would turn out when we are working for God. But we are reminded that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. You know the scriptures actually say Philippians 1 and verse 6. I am confident of this that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even when we are clueless about how things will turn out. We are often put off by the insignificance of the things that we are attempting for God. But we are reminded that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So, when we commit to do even the little things of God that we are clueless about, God has a way of transforming them for God's glory. We might be clueless, but God knows what God is doing. Even when we are clueless, so what is that saying to us? What is the message of the Easter story for us today? As we talk about people who are clueless, you know what it is? It's telling us this. Faithfully do the little things that you are doing for God. 
And if you remember nothing else that is said in this message, remember this. Faithfully do the little things that you are now doing for God, even if you are clueless about how they will turn out. And because God has a habit of showing up in our clueless state and taking the little we have to offer and turning it into the greatest blessings of all time. You know, that is resurrection faith. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody today for whom God took the little thing that they had to offer, the little thing that they thought did not matter, the little hopeless mission, and turned it into something that honored God and blessed people. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody whose little insignificant devotion God took and transformed it. I'm talking about resurrection faith. That is the truth of the God of the resurrection who always shows up for helpless, clueless people who choose to do their little best every day for God. Yes, the story tells us that. The story tells us a lot more. But secondly, I want to go on to point this out. The story tells us that the darkness of evil will not triumph over good. There is always this message of the triumph of good over evil in the event of the, the resurrection. Now, that is an important truth. And you know, we in the church often forget that truth. You know why? Evil always look like it's going to have the last word. And it fails every time. But we have a short memory. When we see evil, we think it is destined to win. But hear this. Every Hitler, every Idi Amin, every Napoleon, and yes, you're afraid to call his name, every Putin, have to face their day of defeat. Resurrection stares evil in the face and says, You failed. All your weapons fashioned against me have come to nothing. Resurrection says that evil is destined for a disappointing finish. Where do we see that? Just when Mary was thinking that all the evil of Good Friday had won the day, she saw the risen Jesus alive and well and calling her. I tell you something. It is a problem that we struggle with, you know. The problem of evil in the world. Lots of us struggle with it. Christians and non-Christians. Because we ask the question, how is it that a good God can allow so much evil in the world? And it is often called the problem of theodicy. But I make a reference for illustration even to another passage. Why am I referring to this passage? Because it deals with the problem of evil. Just like the resurrection deals with the problem of evil. Here, God answers the question that a prophet asks. I don't know how often you read the book of Habakkuk. But in Habakkuk chapter 1, Habakkuk has some complaints. He's asking God in chapter 1, how is it that evil people seem to be doing so well? How is it that they always seem to be succeeding? How is it that the, the, the thieving, crooked, rich man always seem to be winning over the poor, honest man? Or woman. And you know something? You know God answered him. God answered the question in the fact of the resurrection. But he answered Habakkuk 
in plain words. If you look at chapter 2, Habakkuk says, I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Same complaint you have. You know, Habakkuk had it. How come them wicked rich people getting away? How come those, those, those people in power getting away? Well, here's what God had to say to him. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. You know what he's saying? Write it down so plain. There, there must be no ambiguities. There must be no misgivings. It is so certain you could take it to the bank. Verse 3. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. Ah, the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. It seems to tarry, but wait. It will surely come and it will not delay. And then verse 4. Look at the problem. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. You know what God is saying? Our perspective is shaped by the limit of our lifespan. And in the limitedness of our perspective, in the limitedness of those few decades we have, the darkness of the present age always looks as if it is winning. But when God allows us to catch a glimpse of the divine perspective by giving us a more elevated view, because that's what he had when he went up on the rampart, then we see things differently. The way that God sees it, the God who says, my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So while we have those 70 years to shape our perspective, God has eternity in view. And the way it really is, is that finally, those who we think are winning are actually losing. So then we know the truth. It is affirmed in the event of the resurrection and it is declared by Mary that evil is defeated. Our Savior is alive and that evil will never conquer good. So the darkness of evil will not triumph over good. It is declared in the event of the resurrection it is declared by God. It is affirmed in history. And so, whenever we decide, hey, it seems as though evil is winning, I am going to give up being good. I am going to give up being faithful. Just remember this. Their spirit is not right in them. That is, they have within them the seeds of their own destruction. But the righteous shall live by faith. Your faith will sustain you. Long after they are not here, your faith will keep you living. Long after they are forgotten, your faith will keep you going. The just shall live by faith. Finally, let me say this. The resurrection event says, in our present darkness, we can still trust God with our future. In our present darkness, we can still trust God with our future. John 20 and verse 18. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them he had said these things to her. Compare that image with the sad woman who came to the tomb that dark morning. Things had transformed for her. Psalm 139, verses 11 and 12, declare these words. If I say, 
Surely the darkness shall cover me. And the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. So here, hear the final word of the message. Don't wait till you have it well figured out to surrender to Christ. Don't wait till you have all your questions answered to give God your best. Don't wait until you know what is going to happen to give God your future. Your future is better off with God even if you can't see it now. And so the question for us today and this Easter day, will you give God the gift of your life? Will you give God the gift of your surrender in faith? Will you, on this glorious Easter day, when God shows us that God shows up to help people who are clueless, will you, on this great Easter day, when God shows us that the darkness of evil will never triumph over good, will you, on this glorious Easter day, even in your present darkness, where you don't have it all together, you don't have all the questions answered, and you don't know how the future will be, will you on this Easter day trust God with your future? That is my encouragement to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we proceed with the act of confirmation, I want to give persons who today want to make their commitment to Christ, people today who want to say, I am giving my future to you, God. This is the day. None of us know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. This is the day that I want to make my surrender to Christ. I want to pray with you. So I'm going to ask that you stand wherever you are. If today you want to make that new commitment to Christ. If today you want to say, Lord, you are my Lord. God of the resurrection, you are my God. And I'm surrendering my future to you. I'm asking you to be in charge of my life. Just stand where you are. I just want to say a, a brief prayer with you. If you're making your commitment to Christ today, I want to say a prayer with you. Just stand where you are. He won't ask you to come to the pulpit. Just stand where you are. I want to say a prayer with you. God is able. God is able. God is awesome. God is able to do abundantly, exceedingly above all that we ask of him. God is able. Just stand where you are. Stand where you are. Yes, stand where you are. There you are. God, we are giving you our future. We don't know what it holds, but we know you hold it. Let us be in prayer. God, we want to lift up before you those who today are surrendering their lives to you. God, you alone, you are awesome. You alone know what the future holds. But your servants come to you today. And I stand in solidarity with them, declaring, O oh God, that you are Lord. For you said in your word that if we believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, and if we confess with our lips, we shall be saved. We come confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. We come believing what was declared to us. We come believing the message of the cross. And so as your people stand before you, touch them in a mighty way, O oh God. Transform them. Perform this transaction that you alone can perform. And for their surrender, clothe them with your righteousness. Clothe them with your power that this Easter day will be the beginning of a new day 
and a new dawn in their lives so that they will live with you forever. We pray believing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just before we continue with the act of confirmation, Pastor, we invite you to sit for a little. We certainly want to give God thanks for the message this morning. And we certainly bless him for the messenger. Let's give God some praise. Remember that the Lord is your light and your salvation. You have no reason to fear. And even though darkness may seem to be prevailing, just wait. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage.
Is he your strength today? The Lord is the strength. Do you know he's your light? The Lord is the strength. Oh, he can do all things. The Lord is the strength. Hallelujah. Of my life. Whom shall I forward. Amen. I'm going to ask you some questions, just a few in the phase. I do. First, we're going to do the renunciation of sin and profession of faith. You have to say for yourself before this congregation that you believe Christ and that you accept Christ. So I ask you, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Yeah. That's the answer. I do. So I'm going to ask you that question again, and I'm going to ask you a couple other questions. And the answer is, I do. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Amen. So now, I am just going to sprinkle you with some water, not rebaptizing you. I want to remind you of something wonderful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. <laughs> and we are supposed to do this for everybody, you know. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yes, I'm going to ask you to stand. I don't want to kneel because it's, we don't have the cushions there this morning. But I'm going to take the liberty to touch you. Charles, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace. And by his spirit, confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. London, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace. And by his spirit, confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I have a question to ask you. And if you feel the answer to that question is yes, you respond, I will. So this is the question for both you and, and Charlize London. As a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ Church through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Did you say I will? I have another question to ask you. As members of this congregation, North United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, 
your service and your witness. Congregation, would you please stand to welcome them? Turn and face the congregation, fully. Members of the household of God, I commend Charlize and London to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Together. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness through Jesus Christ. Amen. Congregation remain standing while I call some officers of the church to greet them. First of all, their class leader. I don't have their class leaders here. Today she's here. Sister Valerie Campbell, please come and receive these two new members of your class. You can give them a bounce by the elbow. And then I'm going to call three officers of our church. You need to know who they are. The chair of the SPPR, Sister Marva. And the chair of council, Sister Carmen is here. Sister Carmen, just come and bounce them with your elbow. And the, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. The chair of council, Brother Rudy, is here. <laughs> the chair of council, Brother Rudy, is here. And the chair of trustees, come and greet these new members. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And, I'm, and Chris is going to help me present the other, the other gifts to them. Think what they are. Great. So, we have your certificate of confirmation here. And we have a nice Bible here for you. And you know what these, these, these are? I have, to, I have to remind my kids what they are. These are your envelopes to make contributions to your church. And we present these to you. <laughs> so go in peace in the power of the Spirit to live for Christ, praise, honor, and glory. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. To prepare ourselves now for the sacrament of Holy Communion, you should have with you your elements for communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Hear yeah, the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, that proved God's love for us. In the name of Christ you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Will you please stand for the thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth, 
and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So I invite you to take your sanitizer in your pews and just spray your hands a bit. Just sanitize your hands. And I invite you to take the communion elements in your pews. And we remove the first layer. This is a little bit of fine motor work. Remove the first layer to expose the wafer. And let us take the wafer and eat together. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us, preserve us to eternal life. We take and eat in remembrance that Christ's body was broken for us. And we feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us. Preserve us to eternal life. We take and drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us. And we are thankful. Let us say the prayer beginning eternal God. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery. In which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit. To give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to do, before we do the closing hymn, we are going to do the offering prayer, and this is going to be followed by the closing hymn 364. So stand for the offering prayer, please. Mighty God of resurrection power, you offer us life that overcomes death, light that overcomes darkness, hope that overcomes our deepest despair. We offer our gifts as our testimony to your glory and as our commitment to your as your disciples. Bless our gifts to your work in the world and to your reign here on earth. May our minds be about understanding who you are 
and who you long for us to be in this world. May our hearts overflow with your love and compassion for the poor, the oppressed, and the forgotten. May our bodies carry us out of the tombs of isolation to engage our neighbors as sisters and brothers. May our witness be the alleluias we take with us to bring hope to everyone we meet. In the risen Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Because he lives, we shall face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Do you know who holds the future? And life is worth the living because he lives. Hymn number 60, 364. Send his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is left.
praise God. After I say the benediction, I'll ask you just to take your seats for a couple minutes. We have just a couple of announcements before we leave. So first the benediction. Go forth in joy. Christ is risen and he goes before us into this world of fear and pain. He has called us to bring the good news of healing and hope and of redemption. So go in peace and feel the presence of the risen Lord with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter to you. Same to you. Amen. Praise God. Please be seated. So just a couple of announcements.